Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea and today we are here for another Foundation Friday. Now y'all, let me tell you something. This almost didn't happen today. Cause your girl is just, I'm in a lazy mood. I don't feel like doing nothing. But I wanted to get this review up for you guys because I have been raving about this product on Instagram. If you're not following me there, you should. Glam Girl Chelsea. And it's just too good to not share. So I am talking about the Dior Air Flash Foundation. This product is so worth the energy that I don't feel like expending today. So yes, before we get into this video, I'd really love to say thank you for taking time out of your day to click on my video and watch it. I really appreciate your time and you spending this little bit of time with me. I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe if this is your first time here. And if you are a returning subscriber, you have my heart. I'm so appreciative of all of your constant support to me and my channel. It really does mean everything to me. So let's just get right into the video. So like I said, we're gonna be reviewing the, D the Dior Air Flash Foundation. This is claiming to be water resistant and providing 12 hours of wear. I have mine in the shade 4.5N. And let's just talk about what Sephora has to say about this foundation. So this foundation comes in 25 shades and it is claiming to be an ultra fluid, water resistant foundation that blends full coverage with a lightweight formula, providing an airbrush perfection for up to 12 hours. So it's claiming to be full coverage, okay? Radiant finish. It's a liquid, but you'll see that it is a spray foundation. And this foundation is suitable for normal, dry, combination, and oily skin. It is free of parabens, and the package is recyclable, which is great. Um, some other things that you might want to know about this foundation is that it is enriched with light diffusing pigments. It's going to smooth the look of skin and give the complexion a radiant, perfected look that will last all day. And the unique micro diffusion spray system delivers a fine mist of foundation to provide a soft, velvety complexion. So I've been wearing this foundation for almost a week now, um, literally almost every day for a week. So I have a really, really, really good handle on how I feel about this foundation and how it does wear and last on my skin. Disclaimer, it is currently a little after 12.30. Like I said, this video almost didn't happen, so I'm starting really late. I'm going to try and give you all an eight hour wear test. But if I don't, if I fall a little short, trust and believe, because I've been wearing this foundation for almost a week, I can really tell you how it wears because there have been other days where I have worn this foundation for 10 plus hours. So if I fall a little short, please forgive me. Please forgive me. But I do have experience with this foundation. This is no way in any shape or form a first impression. So let's get into this. I'm going to start off by um, priming. So I'm going to use the Benefit Professional for my pores and my T-zone area. And then I'm going to go in with the Bobbi Brown Face Base to moisturize the rest of my face. Okay, so let's apply the foundation. now. I have, when I purchased this foundation, the representative in the store said that she normally just sprays it directly onto her brush. And when I tried it in store, I just felt like that was very wasteful because this is an aerosol can. So if I take the top off, I mean, we are literally spraying a foundation on our face. And if you don't know, this foundation is $62. So I'm not trying to waste no product. So the way that I have been wearing it is just spraying it directly onto my face. And I feel like that works well. Um, it does get in my hair, obviously, <laughs> um, and it can be a little messy, so that may not be the preferred method for everyone. Um, but like I said, I don't want to waste any product, and I felt like if I sprayed it directly, especially onto my sponge or sprayed it onto my brush, I'm getting more of the product elsewhere than I am on my face. So that's how I'm going to apply it today. Forgive the ugly faces that I will be making as I spray this because <laughs> it just comes with the territory. <clears throat> okay, so upfront negative <laughs> about this product. Um, I don't know how much to spray in terms of, not I don't know how much to spray, there's no control in the amount of product that you're going to be using <clears throat> because you're spraying it onto your face and so um, that is a definite negative especially because it does cost so much luckily though I pretty much get the majority of it on my face um, but as you can see I got some right around here in my eye I actually wiped some off 
Um, so that is a qualm that is kind of messy. There's really no control of the foundation like you do get when you have a pump. Even if you have a bottle, there's not a lot of control that you can have with a foundation. So as you all saw, that blended out beautifully and very quick. I feel like with the aerosol spray, there's... It cuts down on the blending time for some reason because um, I, I really don't know. I don't know if it's because if it's so finely missed that there's just not much to blend in because it sinks into the skin more. I don't know, but it blends out very quickly. So let's use a brush to blend out this side. I can already tell that I have, well, maybe not. I'll say I already can tell I have more foundation on this side. Uh, maybe I don't. And I will admit, this is the first time I've used a brush because I... Outside of using the brush in the Sephora store, I love sponges. I really liked how it looked with the sponge, so I just kept using a sponge. But using a brush, I think this looks very nice too. Um, I don't think, I'm looking at myself far away, I don't think I have more coverage with the brush. You all tell me. I think I am going to apply just a little bit more um, on my cheeks. I'm gonna go back in with my damp sponge because I just like it with this sponge. Now, first claim that you all kind of saw me make a face at when I was reading the claims was that um, this is advertised as being full coverage. I don't think so. I think you can get a nice solid medium coverage. Um, like I think right now what I have is a really nice medium coverage. You all can tell me if you think it looks more full coverage, but I think it looks more medium coverage, nice solid medium coverage. If you were to try to build this up to full coverage, I think you're going to waste a lot of product trying to do that because I really don't think this product is a full coverage product. Um, and if it is, like I said, it's just really wasteful. I would not want to use that much foundation on my face. Like, I don't even know how many times I've sprayed this on my face just in this tutorial. And so I kind of feel like if I was really going for full coverage, I would just be wasting a lot of product. I think what we have right here is a really good solid medium coverage and the finish of this foundation oh it's just my eyes <laughs> sorry it's just gorgeous like I think it gives such a as such a filtered effect and I'm kind of giving away the review now but when I say I am obsessed with this foundation and I know us beauty gurus like to throw that word obsessed around everywhere but let me tell you, obsessed. I'm telling you, I feel like my face just looks filtered, like flawless. You can see that there's a radiant finish. And honestly, I would say that I think this foundation really could work for all skin types, dry, normal, combination, and oily, because the finish is radiant, but you'll see as I go to apply my powders and things like that, and as we uh, wear this throughout the day, this is not gonna be looking very, cakey or oily as we are wearing it. So I really think this really is a foundation that could work for all skin types, um, especially if you manipulate it with your primers and your powders and things like that. So let's go ahead and do some flash photography to see um, if we have some flashback. Okay, so in terms of flashback, uh, I don't think we really have too much flashback, but I do think my face does look a lot lighter than my body. Um, but I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think because I'm leaning toward there might be a little bit of flashback with this foundation. Um, so yeah, don't know if this would be the best for flash photography. Maybe it would look a little different once I added my powders and things like that, but mm, I don't know yet. So let me go on. I'm going to put on the rest of my makeup and then we will come back to uh, show you what everything looks like with makeup and things on. Okay guys, so we are back and I have all of my makeup on my face. I will have everything listed down below if you're interested in what I'm wearing. And let's just do a couple of, you know, a couple of thoughts right now. So I've got the foundation on now for probably, mm, I've had the foundation on for almost two hours now because I just sat down and played in makeup and, you know, time kind of just got away from me. So we can do like a two little hour check-in to see how everything's looking. So let me get up close so you all can see how everything is looking. 
So this is the foundation on my face after a couple of hours. And I will say that I do think color-wise, this shade is a little, a little too light for me now. Um, not to the point that I think it looks horrible, but I think this is definitely more of my winter shade. Um, there are 25 shades, but of course, we definitely could add some more intermediate shades because the shade below this was too deep for me. So, I think that this shade is just slightly, slightly too light. Um, in terms of it sinking into fine lines, don't really see that going on too much. Just, I just have a little bit of settling in this fine line right here, but I don't think it's anything that's exaggerated. My small little fine lines right here. Y'all, I need to shave my mustache. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll handle that next time. <laughs> Um, but my final lines right here, to me, still look good. And I do think that the, the overall finish of this foundation is more satin radiant. But definitely not too dewy. Definitely not, obviously, matte. I think that's it for now. You guys tell me what your thoughts are for right now as far as how you're thinking that it looks. I think that the overall finish of this look is so perfected. Like when I first um, put this foundation on and I literally just put it on my face, I was like, my face looks filtered. This is the first foundation where I really have felt like, I feel like I have a filter on my face. I think the finish is just gorgeous. It's so pretty. This is definitely lightweight. Like when I have worn this throughout the day, I don't feel it on my skin and that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing because I'll go to touch my face and forget that I'm wearing foundation. So the claims that it being lightweight, definitely I agree with. All right, that's it for now. I will check back in at the end of my day once again. I'm gonna try to get us eight hours, but we may fall a little short. But I will check back in and then if I don't make it to eight hours, I will tell you how it looks after the eight hour run. Okay guys, we are back and this is mm, not really the end of the day. So I've had this foundation on for about six hours and I pre-warned y'all, <laughs> I may not have made it the whole day and I'm not, but like I said, I have worn this foundation for almost a week, six days to be exact and I've worn it definitely longer than six hours on other days so I can definitely give you a review of it. So let's, um, so let's zoom on in and we can see what everything is looking like. So here's the foundation on my face. Like I said, I've had it on for about six hours. And um, yeah, this is what we're looking like. Okay, so let me get my hair. So after six hours, I do have a little bit of dewiness around my nose, which is where I typically am going to be a little more oily um, at the end of the day. And in terms of everywhere else, I just feel like my face looks radiant. I don't think it looks extra dewy. I don't think I look oily. Um, you guys can definitely tell me if you think otherwise um, because you all tend to see things that I'm not seeing on camera. But I think the finish of this foundation really and truly is radiant. So I'm gonna get me a brush and just touch up. And I didn't add any powder to the brush. I'm just using the brush to kind of blot with. And as you can see, just with that touch up, I definitely feel like I can keep going with this foundation. This foundation is definitely long wear. I think the claim of 12 hours is pretty spot on. The longest I have worn this foundation has been, mm, I think 12 hours or more is the longest I have worn it. I'm thinking about the days that I wore it to work. I usually, I put my foundation on around six something in the morning for work, and I usually don't take it off till I get home, which is after six. So, I have worn this, and it has held up all day. It is hot where I live, so it definitely holds up well in the heat. But I love how it wears, in terms of it settling in my fine lines, I just have the slightest bit of settling, which I think this is about the same amount of settling that I had at the two hour mark, and it it hasn't budged more. And like I, like I can say, at the end of the days that I have worn it longer, the only thing that might be a little bit more is I might just have a little bit more dew, but even after blotting, like, the foundation is still gorgeous. So, who is this foundation for? I still think that this foundation could be worn by all skin types and like I said earlier, if you manipulate your primer, so if you have more oily skin, wear a more mattifying primer, 
um, if you have drier skin. I think if you have dry skin, you might be okay. You might want to use a you might want to use a more hydrating primer. Um, and then of course, if you're oily your skin, you might need to set it. Um, I haven't worn this without setting it, so I don't know how long it would last without setting it. I would just say set it to be on the safe side. But I really do still think that this foundation would suit all skin types. And then in terms of like, is it worth it? Because this is a $62 foundation. Honestly, I think it's worth it. But do I think it's worth you like literally dropping everything that you have now and go buy it? No. I think it's one of those foundations where if you're looking to spend money on a luxury foundation, this is one that I would actually recommend for a few reasons. Number one, this really could be an everyday foundation. It would be an expensive everyday foundation, but normally when I wear it, I literally will spray my face about, let me see, maybe like four or five times just to get like a nice light to medium coverage. And so I like it because it could be worn every day. I have worn this with a little bit more coverage, which pretty much the way that I have it on today is like the max amount of coverage that I would wear it. So I feel like I could wear it on more glam events, more special occasions. The finish is just flawless and beautiful. And I really do think you're gonna get your money's worth in terms of the finish of the product and the versatility of the product. I can wear it on, you know, light makeup days or more glam occasions. But I think the biggest downside is I do think you could potentially waste a lot of product and then go through the product faster. So like I said, for me, I'm going to spray it directly onto my face so I can get the most amount of product from it versus spraying it on my brush because when I was in Sephora, I had the brush and I was spraying it. First of all, I got foundation on my hand because I didn't have like the aerosol uh, spray point directly on the brush. And then even when I got it on the brush, like I just saw all of this foundation just like flying away. And I was like, oh no, I need to catch every molecule and put it on my face. So I think that's like the biggest downside is you could potentially go through this product faster. But for me, if I went through this product, I would buy it again. I love it just that much. I think it's just beautiful. So if you are in the market for a luxury foundation, and I know I've said this before, y'all know I'm a, found, I'm, I'm a foundation junkie, but I'm not going to steer you wrong. I'm not going to recommend something that I wholeheartedly would not believe in. So if you're in the market for a luxury foundation and more so you want one that you feel you'll get your money's worth from because you can wear it, you know, across any occasion, this is one that I would recommend for that because you can get versatility of wear and you could wear it every day. I just think it's a really good all around product. It's not finicky, it's not, you know, bougie in terms of I only like this type of primer or this type of concealer or this type of powder. Like, she plays really fair. She's like, I know I'm bougie, but you know, I try to be accommodating so you can like get your money's worth. And I appreciate that. So, yes. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope that you found this review helpful. And if there's any other questions that you have that I did not answer, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye, guys.